Hi everybody, I'm Adam Duncan and this is Music of the World. Today we're looking at Cambodia, trying to gain an appreciation of the country's music through musical clips and commentary. Let's begin. So, we're going to listen to eight clips here with a bit of my commentary. It may be impossible to give an actual best of Cambodia, but I feel that this paints a nice picture of the country. Uh, by the way, that was Jam Dap Kai Tiet by Rosare Satia. More about her later. First, we'll do traditional. Also, I have lived in Cambodia for uh, the better part of my 20s, so this is a very special episode for me. Anyway, we're going to start with a few traditional songs. Cambodia, of course, is most well known for Angkor, but that was sacked in 1431. After that, the capital moved to Long Vec and then Udong, uh, just to the west of Phnom Penh, and then it moved to Phnom Penh, of course. So this music, made by a Pin Piet orchestra, harkens back to that era. A Pin Piet orchestra is the Khmer equivalent. Oh, by the way, it's Khmer, spelled K H M E R, but pronounced Khmer. It's the Khmer equivalent of uh, the Thai Pin Pat Orchestra. Uh, you'll typically have four xylophones, a couple drums, two uh, reed flutes, a uh, bamboo flute, and uh, finger cymbals. So this song is by Keo, by the orchestra of the Royal Palace. I got it from a UNESCO CD, and it was released in 1971. Enjoy. Turning from uh, classical tradition to more of a folk tradition, uh, let's now listen to a guy named Kong Nai, who was apparently called the Ray Charles of Cambodia. I've never heard that by the Khmer. Uh, they might ask who Ray Charles is. Uh, but he's often on Cambodian TV. You see him all the time. He plays something called the Chap Bai, uh, which is a two-string guitar. And he's one of the few Cambodian musicians who survived the uh, Khmer Rouge from 1975 to 1979. So let's listen to his song called Farewell Wishes from the album Mekong Delta Blues, released in 2007. Enjoy. ไอ้บ้านสกแต่งไทยยบกําอ้อยเมียนชูปอสันเพยเชนเนี่ยมีสตรุตึงปรําไปบ้านสกสู่สไดโดยปัทนา Oi, Kalai, 
จะสรมบังกายอุ้มใหญ่ตังบองปอนปูมิงขมุยก็มาชักเก้ากองมาแฉซอเฮียภาษาเต้ามาบีกรมสมอ้อยคลายชักแกรปูขนายผุยมุงทวีทางชนังจานเวียสลับเปรียปิดเมียตรงเวียเครื่องลมอ Sometimes when exploring the world's music, it's the similarities between countries instead of the differences that becomes really striking. For example, who knew there was a tradition of soul music in uh, Cambodia? Asia is not really well known for uh, having music with that type of emotion, but it's there. It's just. Not well known outside of the country's borders. So Cambodia is approximately 90% p e r c e n Khmer. Uh, other groups include Chinese, Vietnamese, the Cham, who are a fascinating uh, group. I really recommend checking out their history. And uh, lastly, the Khmer Lu, which means Upper Khmer. I think the term was coined by King s i n u when he was in power in the 1950s. It's really the term applies to a cornucopia of tribal groups found in the hills, surprisingly scattered across the country, but especially concentrated in the northeast. So, for the last traditional song, I'd like to include a song by them. This is from a Smithsonian release from 1970, Cambodia Traditional Music Volume Two, Tribe Music, and it's by the Northern Cambodian Gong Ensemble, which I presume is just a name given by the uh, ethnomusicologists. Who recorded this originally? Enjoy. <laughs> Let's take a complete 180 onto the guy who's considered Michael Jackson plus Elvis plus Paul McCartney plus Beyonce, uh, all rolled up into one. The man who reminds older people of the golden era and the nostalgia s passed on to the kids. It's Sin s i s a m o u t who was really the king of Cambodian music from the 1950s to early 70s, when all the women wanted to be with him and all the men wanted to be him. So here's Mao Pina. By s i n s i s t e m o t which means "Where are you from?" Enjoy.
All right, I hope you don't blame me for playing the whole two-minute track there. This is where I get my groove on. There are three major superstars from this era. Of course, Sissamout, the other two are Rosare Satia, who you just heard, and Pan Ron, who is my fiancé's favorite. I'll play her next. And all three, by the way, died under the Khmer Rouge. Sorry to be a bit of a downer. Anyway, the song is Ro Min Chai Te. Enjoy. So as you can hear, the cha-cha rhythm was quite popular in Cambodia. It still is. Pan Ron is a bit of a dark horse. I think uh, Rosare Satia is much more famous. So I'll play her next. This is Chinamon Dap Ramoy, or I'm 16. If you're ticked off at me for ending that song too early, don't hate me just yet. I'm going to play it again, this time by a modern band. Though this music has always been popular amongst Cambodians, it has really developed a cult following amongst music lovers and Cam- Cambophiles across the world. And this has really been helped by this band out of California called Dengue Fever, uh, led by the Com- Cambodian-American singer Chom Nimol with a Western backing band. And they do a mixture of period pieces and originals influenced by the mu- uh, the music of uh, the era. And they're the only Khmer music I know of that's been reviewed in Pitchfork. They have also inspired some other bands, such as the Cambodian Space Project, which I recommend checking out. So here again is I'm 16, by this time, the modern band, Dengue Fever. Enjoy.
so I've left so little time for modern music. But the last one I'll play is a dance song. Uh, th this style is popular in Thailand as well, uh, largely originating from Khmer Surin, who uh, are a, uh, the ethnic minority in uh, northeastern Thailand. It is by Kamarak Sreemon. It's called Changbam Prapon Khmer Mui, which means I want a Khmer wife. <laughs> uh, so thanks very much for listening. You'll love this song. It's a classic. Uh, you hear it all the time in Cambodia and See you on the next episode. Bye-bye.